What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you the latest news surrounding Destiny 2 and the July 17th update, which is a big one, people. But before we get into that guys, I want to tell you about my little giveaway. I'm giving away every single month a fully customizable controller to my loyal list of subs. To be in with the chance of winning, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. And enter the giveaway via the Gleam link at the top of the video description. Simple, legit and 100% epic good luck you sexy bastards okay so within the update 1.2.3 which is released on July 17th next month we get some pretty big changes now all this information comes from the Bungie weekly update which not long dropped and you guys can catch that linked within the video description if you do want to read through the entire thing so with the update we get some major changes I'm gonna go for the main things right here right now I'm gonna start with a crucible and this is a crucible playlist update quick play increasing player configuration to 6v6 and updating the playlist description removing supremacy from the pool of available game modes control updating control win score to 150 control zones will initially be neutral clash updating clash win score to 100 competitive bomb fuse timer in countdown lowered from 40 seconds to 35 seconds general rumble will become a full-time playlist and a lot of you people are going to be happy about that supremacy will be added to the weekly featured playlist updated to 6v6 and have a win score of 150 I actually enjoy Supremacy, but it's a game mode I only want to play here and there. So I'd want the option to pick it and play it and not have it mixed in with Clash and Control. But that's just my opinion. Crucible Ranks Update. Players will be able to earn Valor Rank from additional playlists. Competitive Crucible Labs, Iron Banner and Trials of the Nine. I mean, I'm top ranked now because I grind the heck out of uh, standard PvP. Their casual playlist or the quick play playlist as many people say but being able to earn that rank playing iron banner i would have done this ages ago so that's pretty cool and it does make it a lot easier to get to that top rank joining a game in progress will protect your valor win streak for that game if you lose no penalties incurred to your valor win streak if you win valor win streak increases in competitive players will be matched using a glory rank this means your opponents will be of a similar rank to you the higher you climb, the tougher the opponent. But actually that's not necessarily the case. Glory loss streaks will be retuned to be less punishing over time. Consecutive losses will decrease the rank points lost instead of increasing. Streaks will still cap out at 5. All ranked streaks will no longer reset once they hit their cap. So that is pretty cool people. And that is what we have on the 1.2.3 update released on July 17th to the Crucible. Now we are going to move on people and this is a biggie, this is massive news actually and that is a new power level, 400 power weapons. Now they state the only way to get 400 power armor before Forsaken is by participating in the summer solstice event. But the only way to get 400 power weapons before Forsaken is by completing Prestige, Spire of Stars and Eater of Worlds. Every time you complete all the encounters in a prestige raid layer that week, you will be rewarded a 400 power raid weapon. This can be any raid weapon from Destiny 2, not just the weapons that drop in that raid layer. Raid armor ornaments also. Each prestige raid layer has its own set of unique armor ornaments. Masterwork exotic catalysts. Both raid layers have a masterwork catalyst that can be found only as a rare drop in the activity. And I can confirm that it will be the Telesto, which will be even the prestige eater of worlds and it will be the sleeper sim lens within the prestige by the stars and I do believe as well the legend of Acreus uh, catalyst can be found within the prestige leviathan and I do believe like it states these will come within that July 17th update now what you do bunch of states each week there is a curated weapon suit and a global activity modifier for spy of stars and eater of worlds the weapon set and modifier will be the same across both activities curated weapon loadouts are based on weapon archetypes so over the summer you might see combinations that require you to equip auto rifles, submachine guns, sniper rifle or scout rifle, hand cannon, rocket launchers. Loadouts are not locked inside the prestige layer, you can bring tons of different guns into a red layer and swap between them at will as long as the guns meet their required curation. For example, if you were doing Spy of Stars and a loadout is auto rifle, submachine gun and sniper rifle, you might want to use the Suicide Regime for Val Phase 1 but swap two Ghost Primers for Val Phase 2 so you can equip Darcy for the boss damage. We are shipping three activity modifiers that the red layers rotate between. 
Two of these modifiers are brand new and were built from the ground up by the raid team to work in raids. The third is a fan favourite from Destiny 2, Prism. Each of these modifiers is designed to provide guidance with advantages over their enemies when they lean into it. The goal of using these modifiers and loadouts is to change the way you engage with prestige raiding each week. The first week the modifier and weapon loadout might synergize really well with strategies and armor exotics you've been using for months. Next week the modifier and weapon loadout might push you to explore the encounter in a different way and use different exotic armors. Looking at you, lunification. They state questions we might have. Is anything happening to the Prestige version of the Leviathan Raid? Nope, Prestige Leviathan will stay exactly as it is, they state. This weapon, curation and modifier will only apply to the Eater of Worlds and Spire of Stars. But in 1.2.3, it might be worth going back and playing some more Leviathan Prestige to see if Kallus has a new way to enhance one of your favourite exotic shotguns. Like I said people, the legend of Acrius this is. Are Prestige Raid layers getting per encounter changes? Nope, they state. When we originally created the raid layers, we wanted to focus on making the normal modes of encounters the most complete forms of the experience. We believe these modifiers and loadouts will create more variety in your prestige gameplay than small per encounter changes. We also believe that the mechanical complexity in Destiny 2 raid layers is very high, and we want to lean more into the moment to moment sandbox engagement in prestige. How many of these prestige raid activities will be active each week? All of them, they state. Do you want to play all three prestige raid activities each week on three different classes for maximum exotic catalyst and 400 power weapon farming potential? Go for it! And sorry people, I lost my breath saying that. When will the prestige raid layers become available? Current plans for both prestige raid layers to be active with modifiers right when the patch goes live. Do we feel like this is in line with prestige being a new way to play each week instead of a one-time event? But we are open to feedback on this. So that's pretty cool people, I mean I look forward to the prestige raids for sure. How about you? Let me know down below. I do like the idea of three new exotic catalysts to chase as well, that's going to be pretty cool. Telestol Sleep a Simulant and the Legend of Acrius, which if you don't know people, the change of the catalyst, the matter what version does this is absolutely ridiculous. Bigger magazine size and a quicker reload, I mean if you're a fan of the Legend of Acrius you will know how beastly this thing is already, so them changes, they're a must for us fans of that weapon, they really are. Ah. Okay, so we're going to move on to costs and collections. The Destiny 2 Forsaken reveal brought a lot to the table on what's coming in September, but there are many questions surrounding new features that we'll be tackling the lead up to launch. This week, we're hitting a few of the most frequently asked questions about the upcoming collections feature. Investment designer Matt McConnell is here to bring the knowledge. What items from year one eventually will collections track? Collections include any weapon, armor piece, gold, ship, sparrow, emblem, or share that available in year one of Destiny 2. Is there anything I can dismantle before Forsaken launches? If you have an item in your inventory right now, you can safely discard it and retrieve it from the collections in September. This does not include consumables, so hang on to those if they matter to you. People, this is absolutely ridiculous. So I can dismantle any armor I have now, clogging up space. And in September, if I ever want it, if I ever want to revisit that gear, where again decorate it with new shaders, I can just pull it out of the collections vault. That's absolutely epic. Same goes for weapons, gold ships, spells, emblems as well. That's ridiculous. I love that. I, I mean, it should have been in the game from day one. I think we all can agree on that, but still it's a great, great addition and I look forward to exploring it even deeper. Carrying on with what they state, what items from year 2 can be reacquired from collections? With the addition of random pet rolls to items starting in year 2, we had to make a tough call for collections. We investigated numerous options for gear with random perks, fixed collection perks, buy pack limits, reroll mechanics, and many others. But each of these came with issues that impacted the collections experience in a negative manner. Ultimately, we decided to disable purchases of all year two randomly rolled legendary weapons and armor. We don't like keeping some items from experiencing the full collections treatment. So we are looking at a long term soul for storing your exact perk rolls in collections. How much will it cost to reacquire items at your collections? We're currently working on cost for item acquisition and we'll have more information at a later date. We have two main goals when deciding on reacquisition costs. Reacquisition is in a currency sink. We aren't trying to make you spend all your hard earned glimmer. We just want to make sure the items you find out in the world still have value. 
players won't have to deal with currency conversions. For example, if a shader dismantles into Glimmer, it costs Glimmer to reacquire. If a shade comes from Eververse, it will dismantle into Bright Dust and therefore cost Bright Dust to reacquire. These same goals are true of all collection items. Note, a lot of you have been asking about the cost of shaders. We can say that they will have a cost to require from collections, but there will no longer be a cost to apply shaders to gear. That is the best news I've ever heard in my life, people. What the heck? Here's a quick example. Let's say you got that Sweet Callus's treasure shader to drop from the raid. You'll be able to apply it immediately at no cost. If you want that specific shader on all your armor, weapons, gold, ship, and sparrow, you'll need to pay some glimmer to reacquire a handful of copies straight out of your collections. So that's pretty good. That should have been a way should have worked from the start, people, if you ask me. But again, I'm glad to see it coming with this update. Another question they say we might have when they're reacquiring gear from collections. What power level will they be? Collection items will come out close to your current power level, but will require infusion to be ready for in-game activities. This is a delicate balance of making sure collections don't create a leveling exploit, while still providing items that are usable right away in most acts. Activities, So that's pretty cool too and I understand where they're coming from to be honest. This game suffers from so many exploits it's unbelievable. So they're just watching their own asses if you ask me. But yeah guys some amazing changes coming in September with these collections and with the 1.2.3 update with July 17th which I cannot wait for people. But on that we have come to the end of the video. Prestige raid get grind in July 17th for new catalysts. Should be great, people, it really should. But we've come to the end of the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like truly does help me out. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, people, I will see you on that next one. Always in the